The book of Joshua, part one. Um, we had just finished up with that great book of Deuteronomy, where Moses had gone up upon Mount Nebo and had passed away. And we, the, at the end of the last lecture, we had even read a few verses into this book of Joshua, just to clarify that Moses had passed away and that God would be with Joshua. But now we're going to start the book of Joshua, and we're going to begin with verse 1 of this first chapter of Joshua. And we're going to reread those verses along with however far we get in this book today. But what we're seeing here is a type of the old covenant being passed on to the new. And you, you can say, well, how can you say that? Because this is the Old Testament. Well, it's a type. It's not the literal, it's a type. Because the name Joshua in Hebrew is Yahshua, which is the same name that our Lord and Savior had when he walked upon the earth. In other words, in the time when Jesus walked the earth, they didn't call him Jesus, they called him Yahshua, which is the same word as is listed here, which means God Savior. It was a Greek translation that changed his name to Jesus. And the Spanish even pronounce it Jesus, or Jesu Cristo. But um, it is the same word. It means God's Savior. And there is even a play on the name Hosea, which means salvation. In other words, back when in the last book, we read of Joshua, the son of Nun, being called Oshea, the son of Nun. So this means God's Savior, or salvation of Yah. It can be translated either way, but uh, God's Savior is the most proper way. But there is a play on the word salvation. And we see here Joshua taking over from Moses as a type of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, being taken over by the New with Yahshua. Again, it's only a spiritual type. So, the book of Joshua, Yeshua, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, into the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Verse 3. And every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you, as I said unto Moses. And of course, this would continue with the children of Israel, no matter where they served you, turn to, that God would give them the land. Verse 4. Even from the wilderness of this Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, that would be toward the west, shall be your coast. And of course, Israel would eventually go over that sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea, which leads out, once you go past the Straits of Gibraltar, and goes into the Atlantic Ocean, and across the Atlantic Ocean, or around the Atlantic Ocean, to the north and west would be the nation of Europe and across the Mediterranean if you go across the Mediterranean to the north you will end up in Spain and France and various other places but even across that sea would be the great land which is now called the United States of America which is where the children of Israel in their migrations after they passed over the Caucasus Mountains and went through Europe and subdued it, even though Rome held it for a time, eventually the children of Israel would cross over that ocean and form Canada and America and would occupy many lands because of that ocean, which they traveled on upon ships, all the commonwealths of the Britons, and all the lands held by the peoples of Europe. Verse 
5. And there shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was, Mo was with Moses, so will I be with thee. And I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, thy, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Another means, uh, in other words, wherever you go, through all your generations. Verse 8. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. In other words, you will always speak these words and always bring them to remembrance and teach them to your young ones. But ye shall meditate therein day and night. Meditate means to think about it. Read it and sit and consider. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. Why? Well, because they're pleasing the Lord, and the Lord would be with them. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong, and be of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Verse 11, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals. That means prepare you food. For within three days we shall pass over this Jordan, and go in to possess the land which the Lord God giveth you to possess it. Verse 12, And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Verse 13, Remember the word which Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest. In other words, he's given you land on this side of Jordan, in the land of Moab, and hath given you this land. Verse 14. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave unto you on this side of Jordan, but ye shall pass over before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor to help them. In other words, you're going to help the rest of the tribes of Israel uh, defeat these people of the land. Verse 15. Until the Lord hath given your brethren, in other words, the rest of the tribes of Israel, rest as he hath given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return to the land of your possession, in other words, back to this side of Jordan, and enjoy it, which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side of Jordan towards the sun rising. In other words, on the east side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab. <coughs> Verse 16, And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commanded us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. Verse 17, as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. In other words, we'll follow you and do everything you tell us to do as long as God is with you. Verse 18. Whosoever he shall be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto the words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and be of good courage. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land of even Jericho. And they went. And they came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Uh, many people believe harlot was called to Rahab because she was ex uh, a successful woman who dealt in flax, as we will see as we read farther on. But at the times of these writings, if a woman was successful, unless she came into money uh, which she inherited, or 
through marriage. In other words, if she was single and successful, she was looked upon as she could have only done it by being a harlot. So therefore, Rahab is called a harlot here, and it is kind of sexist, but nevertheless, the connotation did take hold of her. But I believe you'll find that she was anything but a harlot. Verse 2. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came in men hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. Verse 3. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that came that are come to thee. In other words, word had gotten around that they had uh, gone into her. And I guess he assumed probably that since she's called a harlot, that they had gone in there to seek after uh, the pleasures of the flesh, which entered into thine house, for they become to search out the land, or to search out all the country. Verse 4. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, in other words, she's answering back to the king, there came men unto me, or there there came men men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. In other words, I didn't know where they were from. Verse five. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. In other words, I don't know where they went once they went out the gate. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Verse six. But she had brought them, meaning the men, who, he, who she had hidden up on the roof of the house, and hid them with stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. In other words, this tells you what her profession was. She was a weaver of flax. <coughs> Verse 7. And the men pursued after them the way of Jordan, the way to Jordan, and the fords, and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out and shut the gate, verse 6, that before they were laid down, she came up unto the roof, or she came up unto them upon the roof, in other words, the men that are hidden in the flax, the two Israelites, verse 9, and she said unto the men, I know the Lord, that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint because of you. Verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea, this would be the Gulf of Aqaba, for you, when you came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. In other words, word gets around fast. Verse 11. <clears throat> and as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. In other words, did melt with fear. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is, the, he is God in heaven above and earth above and in the earth beneath. In other words, Rahab has just acknowledged that the God of Israel is God. In other words, she's showing faith unto him. Verse 12. And this will be her continuing to speak. Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, in other words, a, uh, a sign, verse 13, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver us our lives from death. Verse 14, and the man answered her, our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the, the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. In other words, they're making an oath with her. 
verse 15. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, in other words, a rope, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. In other words, her house, uh, her uh, apartment, or whatever you want to call it, her dwelling, was on the wall and faced the outside wall, and there was a window where she could let them down out of the city wall so that they wouldn't have to pass through the people of the city. Verse 17. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made with us to swear, or made us swear. Verse 18. Behold, when we come into the land, that thou bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou did let us down by. Now this scarlet thread has got a deeper connotation. You've heard me mention the scarlet thread of the Judaferis seed line. So there is a connotation in this. And thou shalt bring forth thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. In other words, you're going to bring them into your house. Verse 19. And it shall be that whatsoever shall go out of the doors of the house into the street... His blood shall be upon his head. In other words, if any of your family leaves your house when we come into this place to destroy it, the, the blood is going to be upon their head. It's going to be their fault for being out in the street. In other words, keep them inside the house. And we will be guiltless. In other words, we're not going to be held responsible if they leave the house. Versus, uh, or, and whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be upon our head if any man or, or if any hand be upon him. In other words, if any of our people kill any of your family, their blood shall be upon our head. Verse 20. And if thou utter this our business, then we'll be, we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made with us to swear. In other words, if you go and run your mouth to the people of the city, or tell the king, and reveal our secret then our oath with you is going to be made null and void and going to take no effect. Verse 21. And she said, According to your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet line in the window. Verse 22. And they went, and they came unto the mountain, and abode three days until the pursuers were returned. In other words, returned back into the city. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. Well, because they weren't there to find. Verse 23. So the two men returned, and descended from the mountain, and passed over, and came unto Joshua the son of Nun, and told him all things which had befell them. Or, which, or all things that befell them. In other words, they told him the whole story about Rahab, and their agreement with her, and plus what they had seen. Verse 24, And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. In other words, they're terrified. Verse 3, or chapter 3 and verse 1, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and removed from Shittim, and came to Jordan, and he and all the children of Israel lodged there before they passed over. Verse 2. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. Verse 3. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests of the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Now, you just saw the three days mentioned there. You get a type, even in that, of Yahshua, who was in the grave three days. In other words, he ascended into the pit and went and spake to all the people who had not overcome, even back to the time of Noe, as it's written, and brought some of them across with him, those who believed on him, and uh, gave them salvation. 
So you've got the three-day type here, and it's concerning Yahshua before they moved. In other words, before they moved to Jordan to pass over into the promised land. Again, you've got a type in this of the Old Testament, Moses and the law, and Yahshua, which is the name of this one, Joshua, being a type of foreshadowing the things to come of Yahshua taking them across Jordan and leading them in the promised land. And the word Jordan means descender. And it descends into the Dead Sea, the Salt Sea, wherein there is no life, which is symbolic, quite frankly, of hell. The word Jordan means descender. And the waters flow from north to south down into the Dead Sea. So you've got several types here which God will show you if you ask him and if you can see with your spiritual eye concerning Yahshua, the three days, and crossing over the descender, that which takes you down into hell, the Dead Sea, where there is no life. Let's see, where were we? Verse 4. Or is it verse 3? Well, we're going to go with verse 3, even if I already read it. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of your Lord, and the priests of the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place, in other words, where you're lodged, and go after it. Not before it, but after it. Verse 4. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. That's quite a, quite a distance that the ark is going to be ahead of this people. Because a cubit is about roughly 18 inches. So 18 inches times 2,000. Come not near unto it, that ye may know by the way which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. In other words, you haven't been this way before. Verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow... The Lord will do wonders among you. Verse 6. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. In other words, I'm going to show them I'm with you. That they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Verse 6. And thou shalt command the priest to bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. I think I might have said Lord there. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come here, come hither and hear the words of your Lord. Verse 10. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. In other words, he's with you. And that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Verse 11, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Verse 12, Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. In other words, one representative for every tribe of Israel. One man from each tribe. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon an heap. In other words, the word Jordan descender, the waters of Jordan that come down from above, and descend into the salt sea, which is the dead sea. There is no life in it. It's so salty that nothing can live in it. It's symbolic of the pit. Hell. Verse 14. 
And it came to pass that when the people removed their tents and passed over Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, verse 15, as they that bear the Ark of the Covenant were come to Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth his banks all the time of harvest. In other words, from the time of harvest to uh, even this time of year when they're going to pass over, which we'll read later as the first month, the month of Abib, even the month that they came out of Egypt. Um, the waters of Jordan are going to be stopped. But what it's saying here is Jordan overfloweth his banks from the time of the harvest even into this time. In other words, it's at flood stage. So the Jordan River is higher than it would usually be. Verse 16. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up and in heap very far from the city of Adam that is in Zer or that is beside Zeratan, and those that came down towards the sea, the plain, even the salt sea, failed, in other words, those waters, and were cut off. And the people passed right over against Jericho, verse seventeen. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. In other words, in the midst of it. And this Jordan is the descender. It's kind of symbolic of the flesh. This is the river that Christ would be baptized in. Symbolic of uh, going down, down into the water, submerging, and rising up a new being. In other words, going into the grave and rising anew. So you get a bunch of spiritual connotations out of this if you open your spiritual eyes and ask your father to reveal these things to you. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the peoples were clean over Jordan, or passed clean over Jordan. In other words, God has just shown them that he is with Joshua by performing the same thing he did to bring them out of Egypt, to take them into the promised land. In other words, he brought them out of bondage by parting a sea, and now he's taking them into the promised land by parting a river called the Descender. The book of Joshua, chapter 4 and verse 1. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, verse 2, Take you twelve men out of the tribe of Israel, out of every tribe a man, verse 3, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood, firm, twelve stones. And when ye shall carry them over with you, leave them in the lodging place where ye lodge this night. Verse 4. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man, in other words, one representative of each tribe, just as on the ephod, there would be twelve stones. Verse 5. And Joshua said unto the men, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man a stone upon his shoulder, according to unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. And these would probably be, be larger stones since they're having to bear them on the shoulder and just not pick them up with their hand. Verse 16. Or verse 6. That this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Verse 7. Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it passed over Jordan, and the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel. Now, the Ark of the Covenant is, is symbolic of the mercy seat, and it stopped the descender. It stopped the descender which descends into hell. In other words, which the Dead Sea is a type of. Again, use your spiritual eyes and ask God to show you these truths. Verse 9. 
And the children of Israel did so, and Joshua commanded, and they took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of Israel, or the tribes of the children of Israel, and they carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. Verse 9. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. In other words, he took twelve uh, further stones and put them where the uh, the place where they crossed over the river. And that would be an interesting thing to go try and find these days. No doubt they would be in a circle. Verse 10. Or in two lines, I should say. Verse 10. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished, and the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. And the people hasted to pass over. Verse 11. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over, that the ark of the Lord passed over, and the priests in the presence of the people. Verse 12. And the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over before the children of Israel, as Moses spake unto them. Verse 13. About 40,000 prepared for war over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. Verse 14. On the day that the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel... And they feared him, in other words, they reverenced him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. Verse 13, And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, verse 16, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of Jordan. Verse 17, Therefore, or Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. Verse 18, And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted onto the dry land. In other words, they crossed over on dry land, but where the dry land would normally be when Jordan was flowing, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as they did before. Verse 19. And the people came out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month. Now this would be about four days before the Passover. And encamped at Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. Verse 20. And those twelve stones they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. Verse 21. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What meaneth by these stones? Verse 22. Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. Verse 23. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did even to the the Red Sea, which dried up from before us until we were gone over. In other words, he's shown his power here that he is with Joshua as he was with Moses. He took them out of bondage, out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, which is the Gulf of Aqaba, into uh, what is now modern-day Saudi Arabia. And now he's taken them over the Promised Land by crossing waters. Uh, This is symbolic also of being born of water, as Christ spoke to Nicodemus of. But again, you've got a type here of coming out of captivity by the law given by Moses and then Joshua taking over from Moses and leading people into the promised land which is a type of Yahshua Jesus Christ leading us into the promised land so again you, you, these books are chock full of deeper spiritual messages for those with eyes to see and ears to hear verse 24 that the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that is mighty, that ye may fear the Lord your God forever. In other words, did he say the people of Israel 
or the people round about us? No, he said the people of the earth. And of course, that could mean the people of the region. The word earth can be mean a number of things, but I think uh, due to the notoriety of Joshua and Moses and these stories which have spread uh, in the Holy Bible, that he was speaking of the entire earth because the gospel would be published amongst all nations. Uh, Joshua chapter 5 and verse 1. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on this side Jordan westward, in other words on the opposite side of Jordan now that they've crossed over towards the setting of the sun, that all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before the children of Israel until they were passed over. And their heart melted, in other words, with fear. Neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. In other words, they're terrified. Verse 2. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Verse 3. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel in the hill of the foreskins. In other words, uh, this would not be people being circumcised twice. In other words, the people that were circumcised the first time had all died off. This is another generation. So, this was a second circumcision. And this has to do with the circumcision, uh, again, of removing the flesh from you. But this circumcision was by Yahshua. So again, open your eyes to the deeper type here. The first circumcision of the law was by Moses. The second circumcision, crossing over into the promised land, was by Yahshua, Joshua. So again... See the spiritual types here. This Joshua is a type of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Though this Joshua is human, well, not that Jesus wasn't human when he dwelled in the flesh, but this Joshua is fallible, whereas the true Jesus, Yeshua, was not fallible. Verse 4. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Verse 5. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way that came forth out of Egypt, they had not circumcised. In other words, they had not yet been circumcised. They still had the flesh of their foreskin. Verse 6. But they should have been because the law had been given on the eighth day that you should circumcise your children. But apparently some of them did not do it because they did not know the law well enough yet, I guess. Verse 6. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness till all the people of the men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord swore that he would show them the land which the Lord swear unto their fathers, that he would give us the land that floweth with milk and honey. Verse 7. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, in other words, in their place, because they disobeyed him, them Joshua circumcised. For they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. In other words, as they traveled. Verse 8. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. In other words, till they were well. Because you can quite imagine that this uh, made them very sore. Verse 9. And this was called the hill of the foreskins because that's where the foreskin was circumcised at. Verse 9. And, Je and the Lord said unto Joshua, This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt off of you. In other words, non-circumcision was symbolic of uh, heathenism or um, even Gentilism. And 
the circumcision now is of the heart. It's not of the foreskin any longer. So you don't have to go out and get yourself circumcised. But um, the circumcision now between us and Christ is of the heart. Wherefore, name this place, uh, the name of this place is called Gilgal unto this day. Verse 10. And the children of Israel encamped at Gilgal and, have, and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, even at the plains of Jericho. So this would be approximately three days after they passed over. Because they passed over on the 10th day of the month. Well, four days actually. Because it's the 14th, 14th, in the evening of the 14th you begin the Passover, and the 15th you celebrate the Passover, and for seven days you eat of unleavened bread. Verse 11. And they did eat of old corn in the land on the morrow, after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn the selfsame day. Verse 12. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. In other words, after this time they never had manna again. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Verse 13. In other words, manna was to feed them in the wilderness. And now they're coming out of the wilderness into the promised land. So they're not going to need the manna anymore as provided by God. The manna now would be spiritual from this point on. Instead of literal as it had been to feed their stomachs. Verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Verse 14. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And he said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Verse 15, And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose the shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon there standeth is holy. And Joshua did so. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel, and none went out, and none came in. Verse 2, And, Josh, and the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Verse 3. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. In other words, you're going to go around the city of Jericho once a day for six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear the ark shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn. My, my, seven trumpets. Here we go with the book of Revelation again. And on the seventh day, he shall compass the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets. In other words, seven trumpets will sound. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, in other words, the loudest trumpet, trumpeting blow, when you shall hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now, a, a, a lot of people try to use this verse to go along with the rapture. When you shall hear the trumpet, the walls of the city shall fall down and every man shall ascend up. This means every man shall ascend up into the city and uh, over the fallen walls. But the type is also that uh, at the seventh day, we shall leave these flesh bodies. In other words, at the seventh trump, we shall leave these flesh bodies and enter into our spiritual bodies. 
But that doesn't mean we're going to be raptured away because Jesus is coming here. The sad part about it is that a lot of people don't know that the false Jesus is also coming here before the real Jesus. Because they've been taught the traditions of men. Verse 6. And Joshua the son of Nun and the priests said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the Ark of the Lord. So you've got the seven trumpets here. Remember the book of Revelation. This is a type. Verse 7. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass when Joshua had spoke and it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of seven ram's horns passed before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant followed them. The Ark of the Covenant, of course, is symbolic of God's mercy seat being among the children of Israel. God being with them. Verse 9. And the armed men went out before the priests, and they blew with the trumpets. And the rearward came after the Ark, and the priests going on, blowing with the trumpets. Verse 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall a word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then ye shall shout. Verse 11. So the Ark of the Covenant compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Verse 12. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priests took up the Ark of the Lord. Verse 12. And the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them but rearward came after the ark, the ark of the Lord and the priests going on blowing with the trumpets. Verse 14 And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp so they did six days. Verse 15 And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the manner seven times. In other words, they went around it seven times. Only on that day, they compassed the city seven times. You know, like we just covered, verse 16. And it came to pass on the seventh day when the priests blew the trumpets. In other words, this would be the seventh day that trumpets had sounded. Seven trumps. Joshua said unto people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. Verse 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, and all that are in her house, because she hid the messengers we sent. And these are symbolic of the two witnesses, quite frankly. And this city is symbolic of Babylon the Great. If you read the book of Revelation, remember what it says. Babylon, the, that great city, is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Again, you've got spiritual types here. For those of you who are willing to open your spiritual eyes and ears and see these types and examples. Verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. In other words, don't take any of their gods or their priest robes or anything to do with their religions or their false idols. Verse 19. But the silver and gold and bristles of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass that the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Verse 21. And they utterly destroyed all the city, both men and women, young and old, ox and sheep and ass, 
with the edge of the sword. Verse 22. And Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring her out thence, the woman and all she hath, as ye swear unto her. Verse 23. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren, all she had had, and they brought her out, all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. In other words, they, they brought them out and left them alive, but they left them without the camp of Israel. Verse 24. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that was therein, only silver and gold and the vessels of brass and iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive. Now, you, you have a, a type here. Joshua saved the harlot alive in her father's household. And all that she had and dwelleth therein in Israel, even as it is unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Yahshua saved the harlot. When the millennium comes, the people that have been dismayed, confused, and lied to and deceived by the Antichrist, who make up the harlot of the end times, mystery harlot, the mother of abominations of the earth, shall be saved during the millennium by Yahshua. Again, you have a type here. Open your spiritual eyes and see it. It's right before you. Verse 26. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth the city of Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and his youngest son he shall set up in the gates. Verse 27. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout the country. And again, we have a type here. The Lord was with Yahshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Well, when Jesus walked the earth and did miracles, and spake, and crowds came to see him, guess what happened? His fame was noised throughout all the country. And you know what country it was? This same country. The land of Canaan. The land of Judea. And it proceeded from there until where it is today that the gospel is being published amongst all nations. So you have your types here. The Lord is speaking to you. Is he speaking to you literally with his own voice? Well, no, because you don't hear him. But he is speaking to you from his word. And it should be just as clear to you as if he did speak with his own voice. At any rate... I think this is a good place to stop, and um, I hope you do see that um, the, the types here, you saw in verse 26 that Joshua said, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city Jericho, which is symbolic of Babylon. Jericho means fragrant place, but everyone will think Babylon is a wonderful place too. Because they're going to think that Christ has returned when it shall be Satan playing the role of Christ. So you've got many types here laid before you. The Old Testament confirms the New and the New confirms the Old. This was the schoolmaster and the template or the blueprint so that you can understand in our time, these end times. At any rate, it is my prayer for you always, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you will Open your spiritual eyes and ears. At least consider and ask the question, can this be? And that you will study from the old languages. And that you will diligently, as required by God, read in this book day and night and meditate upon it. Because nothing I say can convince you. Nothing any man says can convince you. You can listen to all and judge them by their fruits as to whether they speak the truth or not. But how are you going to judge whether they speak the truth or not if you don't go into it yourself? 
You wouldn't let someone else do your banking for you or tell you how much money is in your bank. So if you wouldn't trust a man with your money, then why trust him with your very soul and your your belie- religious beliefs? Because a lot of people do that when they enter into a church and say, Yay, brother, to everything the pastor says. Even if he says, we're waiting on that rapture to come. When there is no rapture spoken of in the word of God. It may seem to be spoken of in English, but that's all. Jesus told us how he would return. And he said the things which would befall before his return. As did Paul. And as did John in the book of Revelation. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this book of Joshua. We're just lightly into it now, but it's a pretty short book and it will go by fairly quickly. But may our Father bless you and keep you close to him and shine the light in the path and kick the stones out of the path so that you do not trip and fall into deception or into tribulation, especially the deception and the tribulation of the Antichrist, which is soon to come. May our Father bless you as you diligently study his word, if you seek his word in depth,